Hi. All right, I have a little more information for you. Um, I did some research and I looked into the, um, there's an actual scientific and researched philosophy to all this chaos that is happening slowly and that is going to continue to happen in our world. It's going to be September in just two days and uh, it's important that we know what's going on so we are not left at the mercy of the people that are above us our government, local, federal, and who knows how they're going to spin this whole thing. So as long as you know what's going on, you're able to make the best decision for yourself and, your, and for your families. So have you ever heard of the Kuiper Gap? Um, well, I'm going to do a little explaining, and by the end of this, hopefully you'll have an understanding scientifically of what's going to happen. So, beyond the edge of our solar system is a huge ball of debris. And it's basically like a big donut that encompasses our solar system. And what it is is leftover debris um, from the creation of our solar system. And it's actually enough to create a Jupiter-sized planet. So there's a lot of debris and junk that is in this Oort cloud. That's what it's called. Um, there's an outer and an inner cloud. And the inner cloud is called the Kuiper Belt. And the Kuiper Belt is where the Kuiper Gap is. It was created... Um, the Kuiper Gap was created by a large object that passed through it like a vacuum cleaner. And I will put a link under this video of a photo where you can see the interstellar distance, um, distances in perspective, that photo, because it really shows you how it's all set up and where things are in respect to other things in the planet, in the solar system, including our planet. So what is being said now is this huge celestial, celestial vacuum cleaner could be Nibiru. Nibiru. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, so we do know that Nibiru has a crazy strong gravitational force that is surrounding it. Um, so this could be this is what it does. It's like a vacuum cleaner. There's something called the Kozai effect. I lied. There's something called the Kozai mechanism. And this explains how one object in orbit around the sun can disturb the orbits of one or more other objects. This is a theory, and here's a simple example of the Kozai mechanism. So imagine you're at the center of the sun and you shoot a laser beam from its equator into deep space. So you're passing through all the planets that are orbiting around the sun all the way to the edge of our solar system. Um, and passing through that laser beam or near the laser beam are the planets in their spaces. This is the celestial happy spot. It's nice, normal, and it's predictable. The Kozai mechanism, it also shows what can happen when a large object opposes the happy spot. And this creates, in one word, chaos. Now for a picture of this chaos. Here's a great example. And this information, the basis of this information, I wish I had the name, but there was an amazing video on YouTube 
that explained um, what I'm saying. And uh, I have to find that so I can give that guy credit because it was really amazing. Um, made it very clear. So the picture of this chaos. So imagine a tabletop, um, a flat tabletop with wooding, wood, <laughs> wooding, with wooden spinning tops. You know, the spinners, like dreidels almost, but they're like little wooden toys spinning all over this table. And each spinning top represents each planet spinning, spinning around in its own orbit. Okay. Then imagine a big, a huger than all the other spinning twisties. Imagine a bigger one is dropped onto this organized picture of nice and orderly and predictable space. Get this game going on. This large one is dropped in and it is, how did the guy say? He said, it begins skittering around like a drunken sailor. And what starts to happen is it slams into the other tabletops, the other spinning tops, and it knocks them out of their celestial sweet spots. And within a flash, you have a mess. This calm scene turns into chaos and it's very disastrous as the tops fly off the table. So I don't think that our planet is going to fly off the table but I do think that we're going to be knocked out of our orbit maybe um, in addition to having um, other natural disasters and natural stuff happening on our earth stuff that happens normally um, but yeah, so, um, and we're just going to be along for the ride. So, thanks for listening, and, um, you know, this is really good stuff, and we can talk about theoretical stuff, but when we look at the scientific aspects of it, and we see that there are theories and mechanisms and known and proven facts to this stuff, it makes it a little bit more real. So, all right, I'm out. Later.